If you're looking to increase the altitude accuracy on your drone for either navigation modes in beta flight, return to home, or iNav for position hold, altitude hold, or also return to home, or even Ardru Pilot, one of the biggest things you can do is isolate your barometers. One of the first things you need to do is figure out where your barometer is on your flight controller. Obviously, to know if your flight controller has a barometer or not, you would see that on the spec sheet. Or in the beta flight or iNav configurator, you would see up here at the top where it would have barometer, and that would be like a blue or a, I think a yellow color in beta flight, indicating that it's recognized the barometer and seeing it. If you're not seeing this lit up on beta flight or iNav and you know your flight controller has a barometer, you would gonna go under the configuration settings and then make sure that your barometer right here and iNav specifically, you can set it to auto, hit save and reboot, and then that should auto detect it. Or if you know exactly which type of barometer you have, you can just select it here. And in beta flight, you wanna go to the configuration tab and make sure the barometer is checked on right here. Now in both beta flight and iNav, you can operate in navigation modes or return to home without a barometer. In the releases of Betaflight up to now and the current release of Betaflight 4.5, that is the default operation where without a barometer, uh, it will, you know, you'll have the options for return to home or also known as rescue mode, all just by plugging in a GPS module and wiring it up. You don't even need a magnetometer with Betaflight. Now with iNav, it's a little different. You will need to go down to the CLI and type in get barrow. And then right here, you'll see this parameter, iNav use GPS, no barrow. That is by default set to off. However, if you would turn that to on, the GPS return to home and navigation modes would work without a parameter. It will use the GPS altitude and vertical velocity that the GPS units report to control the altitude, but it's not as accurate as having a barometer. So the fact is the barometer reports a more accurate altitude and vertical velocity, specifically vertical velocity, than just the GPS unit you have. In Betaflight, again, you make sure, you have to make sure to go turn that barometer on. In iNav, you most likely had to have that barometer on unless you change that variable I just showed. So you'd wanna change that back to take the best advantage of using a barometer. Now, if you'd use those implements and you've termed your barrel off, that may be due to not having the barometer isolated, which we're gonna talk about next. So isolating the barometer is really just the same thing we do with microphones. For example, this is a microphone without any type of filtering or my little fuzzy that I have here. Now using the same microphone with a fuzzy on it, you can see there's quite a bit of difference there. And that's what we're trying to do with the foam that you can see behind me. But there's two types of foam you need to be aware of. There's open-celled and closed-celled foam, and you can see this microscopic view of the different foam types. What we want to make sure we use is the open-cell foam type. Here you can see I just have two samples here on the bench. Uh, this is the open-cell foam type over here, and this is the closed-cell. It's pretty easy to find out the difference between the two. You grab your open-cell foam type, and you blow through it. If you can blow through it, it's open-cell. Or if you pour water on it and it goes through, it's open-cell. Conversely, you grab this one, can't blow through it, water doesn't go through it, closed cell. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Now again, we want to figure out where our barometer is on the flight controller, and obviously you can look at the specifications, but you can just look at the components as well, and it could be on the top, or it could be on the bottom, but generally it's on the top. And what we're gonna look for here is, you can see it right here, it's gonna have a little hole in it, and you can see that little hole right there. So it's gonna be a component with a little bitty hole in it. That is the barometer itself. It is critically important that you know we're going to glue this foam on this thing uh you can hot glue it or whatever but whatever you do do not get any glue or cover up that hole um your barometer will still be recognized in beta flight or inav but it ain't going to report any accurate data it will just sit there and do nothing so the air has to go in and out of that hole and what we're trying to do is really simply just put foam over top of this so we're not getting any of that pop or blow by and wind uh, affecting that reading or adding noise to that reading, which then gets filtered. So it'll filter the noise out or the, you know, spikes in amplitude of stuff, but it will throw the readings off. Similar to how if you have a noisy gyro, it throws your PID loop off. Same thing happens here with a barometer and reading that air pressure because it's, it's very sensitive. I mean, you can grab a barometer. If you look at the data in iNav or Betaflight and you simply raise the quad up and lower it on your desk, you will see the barometer read that measurement change. So what I'm gonna do is use some of my CA glue here. I have some medium adhesive CA glue. Uh, you probably don't need something too thick. You could probably also use, if you're craftful about it, use just some simple hot glue. But I would definitely recommend not putting anything on top of the barometer because that is way too close to get into that hole. I'm actually going to be gluing down. This, this barometer sticks up a little bit. 
I'm actually going to be gluing down around here, uh, around the perimeter here, so that I'm not, you know, again, so I'm not getting anything. And I'm going to be ginger about it, so I'm not getting anything. You can always add some more glue later. If it comes off, it's just a little, it's a little thing of foam here. So you can see it's just a little, little thing of foam there. And I want to glue that around this perimeter here. It doesn't need to hold on with all grips of life and death, so you don't overdo it. But uh, yeah, just don't get anything in that little hole. And yes, yeah, so I'm going to show you as I do this, and I need to wear these. And yes, there is a little Velcro here because I used to use these in my goggles way back in the day when I had box goggles. So yeah, I'm 44 years old, so I need these anymore to uh, be seeing this little stuff. Coming down here, just being ever so ginger. Keeping away from that barrow. I have a little dab there. I'm good on that side. Oh, God. And a little dab there. It's probably good enough. Take this foam and I want to be able to hit those pads. I'm just going to place that right on top there. Just hold that down a little bit. And we should be good to go. So I'll probably keep some pressure on that, make sure it adheres and let it dry for a second here. Um, but that is essentially it. We just want to get some foam on top of that. So as air is coming in and rushing across, uh, either moving left or right, that it's not adding noise to that and causing that uh, signal to get oscillations in it, which then get filtered out, but ultimately it would make it seem like the pressure is going up. Uh, you still could have some of that, uh, but it, this will help reduce the amount of influence of breeze, just like we showed there on the pop filter kind of thing. That's it. Hopefully you found that helpful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to throw those down in the comments. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you in the next one.